Hello guys, Patrick here, Agnot Poker. Today we're going to be doing a new video and we're going to be focusing on something we haven't done yet, but something that's actually something I've wanted to do for a long time and I'm very excited to start doing some is um, some viewer community session reviews. So we're going to be doing a session here at MicroStakes. I believe it's 2NL for one of my um, Discord community members. And we're going to be looking at hopefully seeing some interesting spots and just talking through them and having a look I suppose so let's jump straight into the action again just before we do please make sure that you subscribe like leave your comments join my discord community descriptions in the links below all that jazz out the way let's get straight in so let's have a look shall we so we're playing 2NL on Paul Costaras so um, let's jump in I'll pause and talk about anything potentially that comes up but um, apart from that, we'll just be clear sailing. So let's have a look. I say open, nice and easy. Take it down. That's always good. It's nice to see that we've got lots of labels already predetermined, and we've got some HUD stats on a few people. That's good. Could potentially, um, I was going to say potentially free bet jackline suited, but against a ninety big blind open, I wouldn't have done. Nice easy open. King Jack of Diamonds, very lovely, very nice hand. Let's open that up, baby up. Nine and eight, one diamond. I don't mind checking, I don't mind betting. I think both are fine. Same on this ace of hearts. We've got a nice showdown value, but again, people tend to overfold, but we've got a hand that's probably just good enough most of the time. On this river, I would absolutely be betting. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's pause and go back. So. Pre-flop, flop and turn, no problem with. We've got a good showdown on the flop and turn. We don't have to technically bluff these. We can easily just be winning. Um, we don't really need to worry about being balanced or deceptive. We could just easily just be winning. And um, betting just kind of doesn't accomplish too much. Um, so checking the flop and turn, I don't mind that at all. On the river, though, when the fifth heart comes out, we just, we just have to absolutely be going for it, I think. I don't see, um, in terms of like our range, like against Villain's river check, yeah, we still have King High, like Nut Showdown. Problem is, in terms of like our entire range, like we just don't really have a good hand. I don't really expect Villain to be checking nothing enough of the time for three streets for King Jack to be good here. So I would absolutely just be betting 100% of the time on this river. I would expect our Villain to just have like a pair of sevens, a pair of sixes. Um, he might just have another like similar hand to us. He might have another King High, which would be chopping, by the way. Nine, nine, ace, King, queen. So technically we beat like... I don't know, to be honest, like 6-5 off suit without a heart. That doesn't bet, but it's quite rare. I would just bet this river. Just fuck them. Just go for it. King deuce is suited. Let's open that one. Yep, nice and easy. Pocket fours. I don't mind opening. I don't mind folding. I think it'd be based on, again, do we have recreationals behind? Do we have some fish that we can attack? Do we have loads of nits that are going to fold, etc., etc.? Easy pitch with the nine deuce. King seven suited. Um, don't hate the fold. We should be folding a lot there. Potentially at micro states could potentially be three bet in that. Excuse me, depending, um, seeing who the opponents are, having a look, see if they have a high fold to three bet. Easy opens with the a7 of hearts and then queen nona clubs. I don't mind. I think I'd prefer just checking this flop. So many hands that are going to continue here. It's quite difficult. We could go ahead and bet the turn, but again, I would mostly be following theory and just checking this combo and I'd just be folding. Yeah, nice, easy. King Queen, I'll be opening. Um, what's this guy's stats? Let's pause this for a second. So I'm assuming that we've got V Pit PFR three bet is my guess. How many hands have we got on this guy? 124. So it's not a huge sample, but it's enough to have a relative, um, at least a start um, of a look at a, a general, uh, a bit of a generalization. So 25, 22, 14, blind on blind. 
at two and L, people just are not aggressive enough. However, someone with these types of stats would actually give me an inkling that they might be at least somewhat capable and competent. So, in theory, we would be doing mostly four betting here, um, and then like a very small smidge of call and never folding. If you're against a knit here, I would always be folding. If you're against someone who's over bluffing wildly, like ridiculously, I would mostly be calling here. Against someone like this, who's actually looked quite um, quite reggy, but not like. You know, we're at 2 and L, aren't we? So we're not expecting any kind of cyborgs. I don't mind just continuing here as a call. I don't mind full betting. I just wouldn't fold. I would do either or here. I think both are completely fine. Just as long as we're not getting away. Uh, as long as we're not folding, I think. And on the flop, I'd either be check calling or check raising, I suppose. Against large size, don't hate call, don't hate raise. Same with the turn. It's kind of shitty having the queen of clubs because we're blocking some of villains. I mean, having a queen is good because we block queen jack, but we're blocking some of the flush draws and so on, and some of the bluffs like ace queen and so on. But you know, we get absolutely tons of value from hands like jack ten, nine ten, um, queen nine, flush draws, ace jack of clubs, whatever. Some worse kings. Yep, yeah, nicely played. Yeah, the nut flush draw. Okay, decent. Don't hate our float here with the king jack. I think it's a nice easy float. Probably fold into turn. Okie dokie. One thing at the the stakes is people tend to. I don't. I don't think people tend to like bet one and give up a lot. So just keep in mind who you're against and and um, what the tendencies might start to be, so that we're not just calling a lot and folding turns to people who just barrel 100% of the time. I think this king ten offsuit here. Did someone open? Oh no, yeah, easy fold. Yeah, sorry, I thought it folded around and we uh, mucked it. A9 suited, um, it's it, we wouldn't really be opening A9 suited as a decent fold, but I would consider it if you've got um, recreationals behind, potentially. So pausing here, um, well behind, well behind, okay, yeah, we're pitching that. Want to see a nice large size of the jacks? Yeah, excellent. We've got a fish here. What's this, a passive? Passive whale, um, passive whale, thirty-two three. Yeah, nice and big. Just get loads of value from worse hands. King seven six, probably checking or betting small. Bursting one big blind, only call. Um, on this turn, pff, I mean, what does he do first? Let's have a look. It's one big blind. Um, I don't think I would ever consider folding because it's a recreational. Like you don't, you just. The problem is like this actually feels like a king or a flush. It actually does. But the problem is it's just like we're getting like beyond ridiculous odds here. We're not looking to improve really. It's more just a case of if this guy is betting one big blind, we're assuming that he's just silly enough to maybe bet his entire range. Like does he just have like seven eight here sometimes? Does he have like nine ten here sometimes without a heart? You know, like you can't really fold to one big blind. I don't actually expect to ever be winning that often either, but. I would never turn this into a bluff. Had this guy gone like three or four, I'd just fold. When this guy goes one, I just think ugh. it's probably a break even, but I've seen it before where people just have like weird shit. On this river, I might consider folding because now there's just a million straights and two pairs with all of these weird and wobbly hands. I don't expect to get shown Queen Jack offsuit without a heart anymore, like for example, so I'd probably fold. See what happens. <laughs> That's one big line. Uh, I'm going to assume that we're beat here. And I don't think I would have called even for one big blind. Call me a knit. Okay. That's pretty brutal, though. I don't fault you for calling one big blind. If you think so that they might actually just have random shit there. Fair enough. I'd be opening 8 nice suit in the hijack. Okay. I think I'd be opening this, especially with... Um, do we have any recreational spine? So we've got two people with shorts behind... 61 7 so it's kind of like a, a, a again another sort of passive whaley opponent behind two short stackers i i mean again unless you've got information i would be opening these though i think you can um i know it's a high rake environment would want to make you pay tighter but the thing is you can make more money against that by playing um against recreational players post slot that like you can absolutely make more money but it's not you know it's fine but i would be opening eight nine suit i think We can open jack five suit and the small blind if it folds around to us. It does not. I'd be folding. We can defend the queen deuce against a three x because um, just a thing because we've got like one of these one of these hands that's really really good to use as three bets, especially in the blinds like queen deuce, king deuce, things like that, especially the suited. 
and some of the offsuits as well with the ace x things like that and some king jack offs king 10 offs jack eight suit like a couple of these kind of like middling hands and the lower polarized hands like you can start to really use these as three bets like you don't have to but i'm just saying against a 3x uh, and this guy's opening he's like a 23 12 three he's quite tight but i would assume assume on the button that he's probably opening a little bit wider um, and enough hands that he can fold to three bet so like queen do suited against a 3x would probably be quite a good candidate to three bet a lot of the time i think these boys are going to fold way too often and it'd be pretty good you can also call calling is also completely fine but as the rake is high and people open larger i would be slightly more incentivized to three bet this personally okay flopping the top here. i don't think we should be doing any check raising with this kicker i think i like calling Unless you got know the guy's an absolute mental case. Um, versus in turn check, sizing. So we're a purely exploitative mindset. So we just have the best hand here almost always, unless he's got some ridiculous trap, which they don't really tend to have. So don't think this guy's got any protected checkbacks with Queen X or better, for example. So I think he's going to be capped really heavily, right? So against like an eight, a nine, pocket seven, some ace highs, whatever, maybe some turn flush draws, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think I could do all sizes here. I don't really care. If we go small, we can target sevens, a five, the weaker eight X, some ace highs. If we go bigger, we can target like 10, nine, like ace eight, something like that, I suppose. And then some flush draws, whatever. in the tunk he's gonna fold he's gonna call let's find out nope he's done easy pitches king d suited we can open this one in the cutoff if it folds around looks like we've got a well in the big blind we've got a pretty tight player in the small blind and then we've got a recreation on the button so it's a good spot oh no against limp i would be i would be absolutely isolating this i'm not saying king deuce is ahead potentially of the utg range but against a limp and with these kind of players behind i think we make a lot of money by um raising this one up make it four make it five take him out take the dead money or just attack i would just go with this one technically speaking you can have like queen five suited plus and then you can have all the suited king x in the cutoff but I, I would definitely be opening this and attacking in this spot. Folding, folding, folding. Got some playable hands, potentially. We've got the ace-queen suited. Table two, that's nice. Yep, nicely done, easy. I like that we're marking up all these colours. Really, really good. What do we do here there? One thing I have noticed that we haven't got any notes on any of these players, so make sure if we can find them, don't put them on. Um, six, seven suited would mostly be folding. Uh, again, though, I would look at the players behind. I don't see that we've got any. Oh, there you go. There's our stats. All of these players are nits, except this one here. Like 0% 3 bet over 60, 0% 3 bet 14, 10, 15, 10, 19, 14, 21, 12. These are all nits. These are all massive nits. Like, I personally would just say to myself, I've got four or five nits at the table. No one's really going to run me over. I can run these people over. I would start opening these, attack their blinds, take them down, and then attack them post swap. I would go for it. I don't think I'm not saying it's making tremendous amounts of money, but I think you, I think we should be opening that personally in in that um, configuration. Table two with the tens. Um, sorry, what happened here? We opened and then this dude defended. Yep. <laughs> Um, facing lead, so we got a we got a really really good hand with amazing uh, amount of backdoors. Problem is because we're not being strategic, we're only sit playing against the people we're playing against in an exploitative mindset. Right, this is two and L. I don't know what I would do here. I would fit, like because this guy's got three hundred bigs. I mean, he could still be a complete absolute donut. We don't, doesn't have to be a good player. Cause he's got three hundred bigs. We have no idea. There's a 
smallish sample, but relatively good. This guy's 2920, it's pretty strong. Maybe a little bit whaley with a V pit, but his three bets only 2%, but it's still a small sample. We need to be looking at. I mean, I'm not expecting you to have a donking percentage on your HUD, but I would start considering what types of players are leading. Like generally, when you've got the ten of hearts, right? So you're blocking like nine ten of hearts, you're blocking queen ten of hearts, blocking ace ten of hearts, you're blocking jack ten of hearts, etc., etc. You're blocking so many bluffs from your villain; it's ridiculous. He's still going to have loads of other hands. You could have like ace three of hearts, ace deuce of hearts. The thing is, against micro stakes players, I, I couldn't tell you if this is a call or a fold. I would never raise it. Um, just against lead, I just feel like what happens is we call here. We don't really know what turn card we want to see. Whether we, we don't really want to see a heart, we don't really want to see um, any overs. Even some undercards, it's like, don't really know what we're trying to dodge and we don't really know if we're ahead. I just feel, in my opinion, a lot of the time we're going to be mostly facing one, potentially two overs with a flush draw. And we're blocking hands like Queen 10, 9, 10 and loads of these middling kind of combo draws. So I don't hate folding this and then just defending with hands like Jack X and better. Things like that. So I don't hate folding um, directly, especially considering he donks into this type of board with quite a large um, size. If we call, we can play poker, but I think at this stake, I would prefer just folding. I don't think we win that very often and we don't have the best type of hand to cool down. Easy folds. I would be checking here with the 10-9. I wouldn't be attacking this. Could potentially lead just because this is really, really good for our um, for our range and it's just so hard for, for villains to have hit it. Versus in this turn check, I would absolutely be bluffing this turn. We've got 10 high. It's really hard for villains to have pairs here. Like, it's just hard. It's just hard. It's just really hard for them to continue. So I would absolutely go ahead and bet quite big. I'd probably go ahead and bet about sort of two and a half, three. If this check, I was going to say, if this checks around on the turn, we absolutely need to be blasting this river. We cannot be checking this down with 10 high versus two limps. I, we just never win. We absolutely never win. We absolutely should have been this ace high. Also, I would mark this guy as limping ace jack suited. Get him marked, Get put a note on and say that he's limping um, suited Broadway. Easy fold a7. Again, guys, if you're watching and enjoying the content, please make sure to subscribe. Press the bell icon, all the jazz. Leave your comments, press the like button. Thank you so much. Also, my Discord um, and Twitch links are in the description below, so please check them out. Also, as always, we have a 10%. Ooh, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's have a look. 5-6 suited. Again, same principle. So, technically speaking, if you look at theory, you shouldn't be opening this that often, which is fine. You're not doing anything wrong. However... Looking at these HUD stats, that you've got a fish here with their short stack, who's only raising 11%. You've got 16-16, and you've got a 25-15, is that, here in the big blind? I would just, I'm assuming green means fish if you've got someone here, if you've got this guy tagged as green. I would consider opening this more. I mean, the big blind's also a 16-10, right? I would consider opening these slightly more often against these types of player pools, like against the recreationals and against the nits who are going to just fold and not really put any pressure on you. You can get away with opening these more, okay? I would think that you can actually make a very small win rate from these um, rather than sort of breaking even in a high rank environment. But I would go for it. I would honestly start thinking about opening these more often. Exploitatively, yeah. But it's only against the populations. Um, ace queen, we can call or free bet. I think both are fine. We've got a short stack here, so I don't mind calling, allowing him in with the other wreck behind. I don't mind free betting and getting value against the um, hijack. Both are completely fine. Against a cold call, okay, that's fine. Let's have a look. I'd be checking or betting probably around 40%, something like that. And against check jam, just easy fold. Yeah, if you want, we can mark, we can watch and then mark the opponents. Let's have a look. Okay, 
So really important to note here before we move on, because this guy has cold called ace king suited instead of four betting. Like the three, he's cold called the three bet with ace king suited. Had he had a hand like ace queen and stuff, it's not really that relevant because at these stakes, that, that, that that's ex what you're expecting to see. I would expect ace king suited to primarily four bet though. So if this guy, I would mark this guy, if you've got him already as a recreational, mark him as a tight recreational and put a note saying that he's cold called a three bet in the big blind with ace king suited rather than four betting or showing any aggression. Same with this guy. This is an even more valuable note is that you can mark that he's opening up Jack A offsuit in the hijack and just check, uh, calling a three bet multi way and check dumping all in on the flop with a really shit top pair. Really, you're going to make, you're not going to do it in versus this guy in the future and you're absolutely going to print versus this dude in the future. Get them marks. Okay, really important. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. <laughs> What's that say? Hates money. But yep. Excellent. That's what we want to do. But yeah, mark this dude as well. Put a note saying this as well. Also, this is a good spot to to put a note on for both of these um, players. Really important. Okay. This guy's got a three bet of twenty percent. Is that so? Keep an eye on that. Obviously. I mean, against someone like this, a 42, 22, 20, I wouldn't fold a suited ace in position if you three bets. Yep, keep marking them up. Nicely done. What I was saying before, guys, before I got interrupted by those hands, is the um, on the uh, ooh, wrong side, left side here, there is a 10% uh, discount code for GTO Wizard. If you want to start studying and getting better at the game, absolutely start having a look. Download it. It's completely free. Look at some of the free um, content with the um, charts and have a look at the 10% uh, discount code there as well. What do we do here? Do we open the 7-6 offsuit? A little bit loose, but YOLO. We've got a recreation on the big blind. I don't hate it. <laughs> Just be a little bit careful. Flopping middle pair here with this SPR, I would mostly be primarily checking and then calling. That's what I would suggest. Betting it and race sucks. Betting the flop kind of sucks. Um, building the pot kind of sucks. Betting and checking leads, like, kind of puts your villain in a spot, especially the recreationals, where they want to go, ah, you race pre, you bet the flop and you check the turn. That's a green light for me to go out and put loads of pressure on you. Whereas if you check the flop cool, at least you're keeping their range a bit wider and you don't have to make them sort of go crazy. So just keep an eye out for that. Getting Snapchat back, um, your hand doesn't, you don't really beat any 7x. You can get called by a 3x, 4s, 5s, maybe a deuce. I would probably bet like one big blind, one and a half big blinds or check. I think I'd prefer checking and calling a bet from villain. That's what I'd probably prefer. Yep, nicely done. Easy bet, table one. We're not having any protected checkbacks. We don't need to put micro stakes. Just bet quite big. Oh, a bit bigger than two. Technically, your range doesn't, you know, you won't, you would want to bet bigger here. Um, what happened on the turn? So, ooh, that was really fast. I'd be betting massive on this turn. I'm only scared of 9, 10, 10s, 10, 5 suited, 10, 3 suited, whatever. A few combos. I'd be betting quite big here. Against lead for just under half pot. What's this guy? 52, 20. Yeah, I'd be raising this shit up. This guy could, this guy could have anything. He could have kicked, picked up King Jack, Queen Jack. He could have, um, I don't know, I mean, he could already just have like six, seven. He may have turned a ten. You know, we just we just we, have, we absolutely murder that range. Um, I would just be raising this directly. I'd be going something like massive, like fifteen plus. Get value from this dude. Don't just call. Don't let him just call. You're allowing him to realize for free, uh, for cheap, basically, and you're not getting the value out of your hand. At these stakes, don't be scared. When your villains are leading into you like that for a smaller size, don't be worried about him potentially having like 10, 9 or a set or something. Hell no, just raise that shit. If he free bets the turn, go from there. But I would be raising this turn pretty big. Betting, scaling up as well, and then the raising turn. Um, 6 8 gets there. I mean, I suppose sevens, but it doesn't really it doesn't represent sevens. I suppose you can have nine seven, but I don't think I don't think your villains check to check raise that on these types of board textures. This looks like a nine, this looks like a ten, this looks like a seven of hearts, this looks like six seven of clubs, that's rivet that's rivet a pair. Um I would expect him to just bet again with a ten and a so his best hand is probably a nine. I'd probably bet something like half pot, something like that. Maybe slightly smaller. Yeah, that's fine. I don't think we get raised forever. And if you get raised, I think you beat, to be honest. 
even though we have a monstrously strong hand. But I just wouldn't have expected him to play um, a worse hand like that. That's fine. That's good. Yeah. Uh, against the min three bet. So again, this is these are the types of spots, right? At micro stakes, especially like two and L, five and L. When you get min three bet, it means one of two things. It means like you've either got someone who still has a death tight nitty range, but they only three bet to a small size to keep you in, and then they always have a really good hand. The other type is just a complete absolute donut recreational because it's anything and everything. You need to look at the HUD stats, you need to have some information and start identifying your opponent. For example, for example, because you're because you're kind of priced in it can put you in a situation where if you're against someone who's just free betting to this size with with, with anything and they're just being silly, then you're, you're getting a really good price with a decent hand to continue. If you're doing it against someone who's always got a really good, really, really good hand, a send off suit out of position is, is just toast. You're just going to get murdered by all of their value or you're going to get bluffed and you're just in a really awkward spot post-flop. So I would be careful. Here you've got no hard information whatsoever. I just see this as a weird recreational. I just call and play cautiously post flop. If we hit, I wouldn't completely do it in. But I think it's too strong to fold versus this price. And this guy's short stacked. So I'd probably just call and see how we go. I don't hate folding though, because I understand why you're doing it. But I probably would have called there. What was this? Sevens, table one. Um, because you've got a recreational on the big blind and you've got this guy, I'm assuming that you've green is wreck. If you've got this guy ta t tagged as green with 50 bigs. I'm guessing he is too then. I would never fold this, especially with another recreational behind you. One and a half big blinds to try and stack someone, I would go for it. Your pocket pairs perform better than they should do at micro stakes. And this guy's never going to squeeze you off. So I'd probably call here. Especially against a 2x. Gonna have five more minutes, guys, and then we'll uh, move over to part two. I don't want to make an hour-long video. I'll put it into two sections. Pocket queens again. I'd be scared if this guy three bets us. 22, 3, 5. Jesus Christ. It's almost a relief to take it down versus that person when he tanks. King Jack of Demons. Yep, let's open that one. Easy fold. Queen 5 off. See if we can make some money with the Ace King. Sadly not. This just reminds me of the of my own sessions. Nothing really happens, nothing really happens, nothing really happens. And then we just get cold decked. That's what we're here for. Uh eight seven off suit. If you were against a really, really trashy fish, I would consider potentially having these as defense only if you really think you can absolutely do people in the post swap otherwise i'd probably just be pitching as we should be a little bit loose with eight seven off suit but again if we feel like we can make it work fine uh i'd probably wait for something like nine ten plus though um we defended this one check check i would check again on the turn this is a little bit weak we could potentially think about probing turn version delayed i would call Hoping villain checks back river. Probably folding to river probe. This doesn't look like a bluff to me. I don't know, honestly, like, again, like, HUD stats wise, this guy's only opening 13%. So, overall, so when he checks back, he's got a lot of ace highs, but he's also got off a lot of hands like jacks, tens, nines, eights. He can have a seven, king seven. Um, I don't think he just has to have like a set of deuces on the turn. But when he when when these guys delayed C bet, like they if they've got ace king, ace jack, they tend an ace ten, they tend to do a lot of turn checking. And if they bet the turn and get called, they tend to give up on rivers. So this guy kind of looks like he's got something like jacks, nines, eights, ace seven, 
maybe king seven um and sometimes a river 10 like ace 10 maybe like king 10 of spade um king 10 of clubs or something that he's just delayed maybe delayed bet with i would probably fold this um just because the populations don't tend to have enough bluffs but you know i, I wouldn't hate fold. i wouldn't hate calling here but probably a little bit thin the way the populations tend to play So I'm going to pause this one here for 30 minutes, guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you in part two.